Those who repeatedly disrespect our personal boundaries are not people who have our best interest at heart. Plain and simple. On today's case, Ms. Blankenship says she's checked out of her relationship with Mr. McGinnis because he's pushed her boundaries to the limit too many times. She says his anger problems, selfish tendencies, and cheating ways have shown her that things will never change. She is in my courtroom today, ready to take her power back. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Blankenship versus McGinnis. Thank you very much, Ms. Blankenship and Mr. McGinnis. Ms. Blankenship, you say today you are leaving Mr. McGinnis and his toxic behavior behind and starting fresh without him. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. McGinnis, you say Ms. Blankenship means the world to you, and today you plan to fight to keep your family together. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so let us see why we are here today. Ms. Blankenship, you brought the case. Why are we in divorce court, ma'am? I'm here to give him an ultimatum. I'm tired of his cheating and his selfish ways and his any lies. It sounds like you are a woman who is fed up. Yeah. Mr. McGinnis, you heard what Ms. Blankenship said. What do you say, sir? Actually, Honor, I, I want to uh, say with Ms. Blankenship, because she's the greatest lady I've ever been, my grandbabies love her, everything. She's the most loyalty lady I've ever met. And so you're saying love is not the issue? No. You love this lady? Yes, I do. Very, very, very much. Mr. McGinnis, do you agree, though, that you've caused pain in this relationship? Yes. So I need to find out from Ms. Blankenship, is it pain that she can come through, because you never get over it, and what that would take? So, Ms. Blankenship, I'm going to ask you to take me back to a time when you all were happier. Tell me how you first met, please. We met online. Okay. Through a dating app. He met my daughter. I met his daughter. Everything was great. I got, he met my family, I met his. We bonded over our disabilities. He almost died of cancer. Uh, I, died almo I died almost at three years old. So you all had some health challenges. Yes. And you were able to survive those I health survive, challenges. I did survive, yes. Obviously. Three years old, yes. And so having unique health challenges, that was something that connected the two of you. Is that correct? Yes, it did. And you all, though, have been together for 15 years. You lived together. Yes. You became engaged in December 2016. Yes, and you all have older children mm -hmm. from previous relationships. Am yes. I correct? Yes, Your yes. Honor. And there are some grandchildren yes. that are young people aged. Yeah. Like are. three, four, five, and six, and that, that age, yeah. right? They sure are. So yes. this should be some happy times in your life. It should, yes. But there became some sad times. So, Ms. Blankenship, talk to me through a little bit of how what started off so lovely became so sad. I understand you say anger problems have really, really reared their ugly head. Is that correct? Yes, it has. Why don't you walk me through what you're talking about? He's the anger problems, the slam doors. He just... I don't feel priority. I mean, he's just... Well, what do you mean, slam doors? You know... He he came in from work one day. Mm -hmm. um, I was just trying to get dinner done, and he, uh, he was just angry all of a sudden. I was asking what was wrong. He wouldn't reply or answer me, and then he got angry and just went off and storm slammed the door. So, Ms. Blankenship, were you all having any argument before he left for work that morning? No. So he came home angry, is your point? Yeah. What's yeah. going on, Mr. Um, Blankenship? Why were you so angry? Do you remember? Well, I was, I just got off work. I worked 11, 10 to 11 hours a day. And well, when I get home, there's dishes all stacked up. Uh, trash hasn't been taken out. I just don't want to come home to all that stuff and when I get off work. So in other words, you felt like the house was not being kept uh, up apart. It wasn't being taken care of, right, yes. Okay, now, Miss Blankenship, do you work outside of the home? Once in a while, I do, yes. But you are Sometimes. the primary homemaker yes. and caretaker of the home, correct? Yes, I am. So, was Mr. McGinnis correct that the house was a mess that day? It's not always a mess. You also say he's selfish. And by the way, that behavior just now showed some selfishness. But you say there's other behavior, am I right? Yeah, selfishness, like, was on my birthday one year. Um, he bought tickets for me and my daughter to go to the concert. That was nice. And, yeah, it was wonder It was a wonderful night. Come home, me and my daughter was, had a good night. But I come home, and he, once he, he seemed upset, and I said, what's wrong? 
and he said, and he wanted the money back, half of it back from the concert. I thought it was a gift. I thought it was a gift too, but obviously it wasn't. What happened, Mr. McGinnis? Well, why go see the same concert like three, well, we already seen the concert two times. Why go back and see them again? I'm sorry, did you give her the tickets? Yes, that's why I wanted to have for the money back. Because uh, we already seen them a couple of times. Sir, I'm confused. Did you buy tickets for Miss Blankenship and her daughter to go see a concert? Yes. So why did you want her to give you half the money back? Because uh, she's already seen the concert twice. Why go three times? Sir, I don't know about you, but when Prince was at Madison Square Garden, I went seven days in a row. Uh -oh to hear him sing every single same song, to dance every single dance, because that's who I love, okay? Okay. So maybe that's why she went to the concert. Was it an artist that you enjoyed? Yes, I do enjoy the concert. So if you're gonna do something nice, Mr. McGinnis, tell me, why would you ask for the money back? That seems kind of mean, sir. Because I thought, because uh, it gets tired to see the same person over and over, why not? But did he go to the concert? No. He didn't. No. So why were you annoyed? Why weren't you home watching wrestling or oh, something? Oh, I was at, out of work. Okay, so you bought tickets for her to go to a show to enjoy herself, and she enjoyed herself, and then you got pissed off. Yes. Better to be pissed off than pissed on. Go ahead, ma'am. Birthday concert. I understand he got a problem with birthdays because the birthday dinner got ruined also. It did. I thought, you know, he's going to treat me out to a nice dinner, but yet again, it was just a disappointment. He, he wanted me to go in half with it. Do you want to be in a relationship with Mr. McGinnis? What happened at the mall? He was on his phone, and I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just on my phone with a friend. So let me see your phone. He's talking to a girl, how he left me. He was at the mall with his mom. I don't get that. Why is she got to go through my phone? Because she about to find out this. This is Jack's girlfriend. Stop calling and texting him. That's fine. That's why she go through your phone. Come on now, uh, Mr. McGinnis, what's going on? Because uh, I've been, well, when I was a kid, I was always bully, getting bullied. I guess that's why I want to try to be a boy now since I'm an adult. So you are having mama issues. You want her to treat you like your mama did. I'm not your mama. <laughs> and unless I miss my guess, you're not trying to raise no grown 41-year-old man. Am I correct? I'm just looking for someone to love me and make me a priority and put me on a pedestal. But I'll... you say he's also cheating. I have seen, I have seen that, yes. Well, I've seen messages from, of him cheating, yes. Mr. McGinnis. How is it cheating when you see a text message, message and or a hug? That I ain't cheating. Okay, well, first of all, let's hear what she says, and then you and I'll talk about it. You say you saw him cheating. What happened at the mall? It was, we at the mall, it was during the tax time season. We were gonna go shopping, and he, um, left to go smoke for, for, go take a smoke. And he came back, it was longer as usual. And I um, just left it at that and went home. And he was on his phone and I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm just on my phone with a friend. So let me see your phone. He, and he let me see it and he's talking to a girl how, the, how he's gonna, how he left me. He was at the mall with his mom. Oh. Not with me, with his mother. So you literally wanted to be with your mother. And you described her that way to a woman you were flirting with over the text message? Come on, Miss McGinnis. Yeah. You know that's foul. Yeah, and very foul, And I submitted yeah. evidence of that. But why would you do that? Because well, she goes through my phone, like, nonstop. I, I don't get that. Why does she got to go through my phone? Because she about to find out this. So... Uh, I'm assuming this is you, Miss Blankenship, who was texting from... His phone, correct? Yes, Your Honor. This is Jack's girlfriend. Stop calling and texting him. And the response from the hoochie is, really? And you respond, yeah. And then she responds, hmm, okay. He told me he didn't have one that you split up and that you have not been together for a while and he could not change his status. That's why she go through your phone. That's foul. Because you not only are lying to her, but you lying to this third person who now is getting confronted by Miss Blankenship because she is checking her with a realness. That's why she go through your phone. 
Did that uh, answer your question? Uh, but why is she won't let me go through her phone? Because, because I got nothing to hide. She is not, not texting kidding. gentlemen. She's not texting gentlemen, and guess what? You're not even coming in here claiming she is, because you know that's not the kind of lady she is. No, she ain't. She's so, uh, the most loyalty lady I've ever met. You started off by saying that to me. So, so then why you ask loyalty? me that question? Why she, why, why does she need to let you go through her phone? Because her phone probably can sit right there on the desk, and there's not gonna be anything in it but some phone numbers and some coupons and a couple of girlfriends and some funny cat videos, okay? Because yeah. she's a regular nice lady who's doing all the things she says she does. That's why you don't need to go through her phone, but you know why she need to go through yours? Because I'm a cheater. Don't you love a man that recognizes exactly who he is? Mr. McGinnis, you're not making a, a case for why she should stay in this relationship. My daughter loves her everything. Your daughter wants to testify. Kirsten Kemp, what's your relationship with the two of them? Honestly, sometimes I feel closer to her than my own dad. Do you think he treats her with respect? Not always, no. He shows his dog more respect than he shows her. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Miss Langenship, I have to tell you, this does not look good for a relationship, ma'am, because you've said that this is not the only incident that makes you think that he's a cheater. No, he, um... I found another message on his phone telling a girl he, uh, she, that he left her. And it's actually an ex-girlfriend that he used to date. You used the L word with another woman. Uh, and, yes, I did. And she found a text message. Yes, uh, I've known this girl. We used to date. And well, now, why, when she found the text message, just so now we're like brother and sister, me and She's not supposed to have to accept that. She don't want this lady in your life if that's supposed to be your woman. That's really it. Do you want her? Yes, I do. Do you want Miss Blankenship to be texting her ex? No. Who is just like her brother now? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. No, I don't. You would have a problem. Yes, I would. And I'd have a problem also because that would mean she violated the relationship. Yep. I mean, I have to tell you, Mr. McGinnis, you're not making a, a case for why she should stay in this relationship. Can you help me? Well, I love her with all my heart, and my grandbabies love her. I know yes, the grandbabies. You. She no. can be a grandma from afar. Uh, and my daughter, she, my daughter loves her everything. As a matter of fact, your daughter wants to testify. All right. Kirsten Kemp is not able to come in in person, but she wanted to join me virtually because this is important to her. Hi, Kirsten. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am so well, and I thank you so very much for joining me. Am I correct? that Mr. McGinnis is your father? Yes. And Miss Blankenship is your stepmother, or as I like to say, bonus mom, since I happen <laughs> to have a stepson also. Yes. What's your relationship with the two of them? Well, so Jessica is like a mom to me. She's taught me to be the person I am today. Honestly, sometimes I feel closer to her than my own dad. But like he said, he works all the time, so... But... <laughs> Do you think he treats her with respect? Not always, no. He shows his dog more respect than he shows her. <laughs> and, uh, Ms. Kemp, how would their breakup affect the family dynamic? Because it seems like there's a whole lot of relationship here. Yeah, well, if it doesn't work out, my dad's gonna be tearing our family apart. I know I'm grown now and on my own, but I still come to her for all my needs. Her grandkids, my kids, adore their Nini. He would just be breaking us all apart, ruining our family. And the problem is there's been some recurring patterns of behavior that Miss Blankenship just can't put up with anymore. Have you seen what I'm talking about? Yeah, I didn't even know about the cheating. They try and keep their business to themselves, but I don't think it's a good thing. It's not good, and he shouldn't be doing that to her. That's my dad, but I stand on her side. 
And I appreciate you just being very honest about that. Thank you so much, Ms. Kemp, for joining me today. Mr. McGinnis, did you hear what your daughter said? Yes, I did. You should thank Ms. Blankenship for helping to raise a positive young lady because she knows her worth. She knows her value. And Mr. McGinnis, you're self-centered and you... These anger problems just are not good. Right. You get angry for no reason and you take it out on this lady. And in is issues of kind of sneak cheating and disrespect, there's no way for Ms. Blankenship to trust you and to want to be in a relationship with you. Ms. Blankenship, what do you want I'm out of life? I'm just not happy. I'm, I'm just not happy. I mean, he's always angry. He don't put me priority. I don't feel loved. I mean, I'll shower him. I'll do things for him. But where's, where is he doing it for me? He's not. not. He's not. No. But Ms. Blankenship, I want you to hear some real talk. Okay. You're a nice lady. You are a good mother. But you're not actually married to this man. You're engaged to this man. Yes, I am. You do realize at any time that he says it's done, you left on your own. And right now, you're being a doormat. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah. You're laying on the floor and letting folk walk all over you. And I don't like it. And you shouldn't. This man is treating you with no level of respect. And at some point, ma'am, you're gonna have to say, enough, not enough. anymore. Not anymore. You have to say that. I can't say it for you. It's true, and I've, and I've felt that and known that. It's... I just believe in working and, and fighting for something, but I need him to put his part in. You need somebody to fight with you, exactly. but not fight with you. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do understand. But let me be honest with you. That's not Mr. McGinnis. That's not who this gentleman is. He's not gonna fight for the relationship. You have to determine. Is that enough for you? No, it's not enough. It's not. What are you prepared to do? If he can't change or show me some action of changing, I'm gonna have to leave him. Let me ask him. Ms. McGinnis, you heard exactly what she just said. This is your time right now. You tell her what you're prepared to do. I don't wanna mess with no other girl, just you. I need action, not just words. But I'll show you. What do you want him to do? Give him a specific assignment. What do you need from him to stay in this relationship? Stop being angry all the time. Uh, oh. Put me as a priority. Show that you love me the way I show that I love you. I deserve it. This is your life? Pretty much, yes. Is this what you want? No, it isn't. Then you know what that means. You have to make the change. That's something I have to do. You have to walk out. Are you ready to go? Not 100%. So that tells me you're not ready to get up off the floor. Ms. Blankenship, fighting for your family is an honorable, wonderful thing to do. But fighting for a family that does not exist is damaging to the family. You are teaching your grandsons that this is the way a man operates, and your granddaughters, that this is all they deserve. I don't want that. I really don't. That's they what they are they learning from you. And I... Okay, Nene, if you want to do something for your grandchildren, learn to stand on your own two feet. Okay. Make yeah. him earn your love and stop giving it freely because Mr. McGinnis is not in it for you. He's in it for him. Robert, he was not willing to fight for that relationship because he was getting exactly what he wanted, a doormat. Absolutely. I mean, it's so sad. I mean, I felt, I felt bad for her the, throughout the whole case. That's because she does not have the strength mm -hmm. to step out on her own. She's not leaving. No. She, and it's not because she's comfortable. It's not because she's happy. She's not leaving because she does not see any other alternative. Right. That's the saddest part. Hey.